Hey everybody, this is Christian. Today I'd like to talk about the new hardware upgrades I've made to my home server. If you've watched my last video, you know I recently built my own self-hosted AI platform with Olama and Open Web UI. And if you paid attention, which I hope you always do while watching my videos, you might know that I needed to upgrade my secondary Proxmox node where I'm running all of these AI applications mainly because LLMs need a strong graphics card for good performance. So that's why I've got this baby here, the AMD Radeon 7900 XT, a huge monster of a GPU. And I've also switched my motherboard to the new Minis Forum BD795M, which comes with an onboard CPU, the AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX, which is actually made for premium laptops, but that has the advantage of being a very powerful, but yet power efficient solution for your home server. And it's really faster than my old server built with an Intel CPU. Of course, I'd like to show you in this video how I've put everything together and what else I've done, like some improvements to the 10 gigabit network setup and the new rack server case that I've bought. So I'd like to cover a lot of stuff today. However, before we start, I'd also like to discuss another important topic that sometimes comes up when we are building home labs or IT infrastructure in general and want to securely collect data from the internet. For example, if we might want to integrate services through public APIs or maybe scrape information from websites that flow into our automation pipelines. In this scenario, it could be possible you're dealing with blocked websites, tracking or facing IP bans, especially when you're trying to access geo-restricted content. And most people will now think about just using a VPN as a solution, but I've actually got something better for you to solve these kind of issues that is called proxies. So let me introduce you to Floppy Data, a powerful proxy service that is designed to make online activities secure, seamless and accessible from anywhere in the world. Whether you need proxies for secure browsing, automation or large scale data collection, Floppy Data has you covered. They've got millions of global IPs in over 195 locations worldwide, including residential, mobile and data center proxies. So that's really impressive. They even have rotating or static proxies, which are perfect for web scraping, managing multiple accounts or any automation tasks we are doing in IT. And they ensure top tier security to stay anonymous while browsing. The best part is that they also also have an affordable pricing that starts at just $1 per gigabyte of proxy traffic. New users even get 100 megabytes completely for free. So I'd highly recommend checking it out. Floppy Data is an affordable, fast and reliable proxy solution for all of your needs. Of course, if you would like to try it out, I leave you a link to their website in the description box down below. Alright guys, so let's return to my home server hardware upgrades. As you might know, I've recently had great experiences with Silverstone's rack server cases. So this brand has literally become one of my new favorites for home lab equipment. Sometimes they are a bit pricey, but I really appreciate the solid quality of their parts. If you're following my channel, you know I've already tested their smaller RM21308 for my Unraid storage server build. And I've also got the RM23502 Mini that I'm using for my first Proxmox node. However, for the secondary Proxmox node where the AI workloads getting in, I needed something bigger that would fit the AMD graphics card because these two rack cases I've got from Silverstone are just two unit rack server cases. And obviously that's a bit too small. So for this build, I've decided to get the Silverstone RM42502, which supports two fans at the front panel to keep everything cool inside. It also has two 5.25 inch drive base where you can also mount SSDs or 3.5 inch hard drives. And just like I expected, this rack server case from Silverstone is really amazing. Honestly, it was a relief to work with a big server case again and not just two unit rack cases. You have so much more space inside to mount all of the components and cables. Some people said in the comments of previous videos that I was crazy to go with two unit rack server cases in the first place, but Come on, as you can see, I need a little more space for future builds. But for this project, again, a four unit rack server case was the minimum that I wanted to use. For the motherboard, I've also decided to try out something special, the new Minis Forum BD795M, which is an M80X form factor motherboard, and it fits perfectly into this case. 
By the way, this is the first M80X motherboard for minis forum ever. Actually, they became pretty popular for building these incredible mini PCs, but they also have a few motherboards in their portfolio that slowly start to become my new favorite pick for power efficient home server builds. For example, I've already tested the minis forum B770i in my first Proxmox node, which is absolutely fantastic. I think these type of Ryzen CPUs are highly interesting for home lab enthusiasts because since they are actually made for pre premium laptops, they have a low power consumption while still offering impressive performance. And therefore I was really excited to try out this new M80X motherboard with the AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX and I can just tell you guys it is an absolute beast. It has 16 CPU cores and 32 threads with up to 5.4 GHz clock speed. So that should be really fast enough for any home usage task you throw at it. By the way, I've also put this against my old Intel i7-12700, which is a 12 core, 20 threads desktop CPU. And I'm pretty sure you will be shocked by the number. So don't worry, we'll cover the benchmarks at the end. Uh, but let's stay by the Minis Forum motherboard. By the way, you can get this in three different versions. So the BD790i is an ITX form factor supporting PCI Express 5.0 for the two M2 slots and for a full-size X16 slot. Then we have the BD795 ISE, which is also an ITX form factor motherboard, but with a few different specs. And then the one that I wanted to use, the BD795M. So this does not have a PCI Express 5.0 like the others. It only has PCI Express 4.0 for the M2 slots and also for the full size X16 slot. However, I honestly don't see this as a big disadvantage because most of the PCI Express cards that I'm using, including the strong graphics card, they don't actually benefit from PCI Express 5.0. So the 4.0 standard is still totally sufficient when it comes to speed. But instead, this motherboard has an interesting advantage over the other models. So it has two additional SATA 3.0 ports, which I'm planning to use for additional SSD drives just to get a little more storage on my server. And it doesn't come with an onboard cooler. Instead, it supports an LGA 1700 cooler standards. So you can add a third party cooler to the onboard CPU. Of course, you have to buy one, so that you don't need to do with the other models. But as I've got an unused cooler from Be Quiet lying around anyways, I think this gives me a little more flexibility and also the cooling power should be better with a high quality third party cooler. Furthermore, the other specs of the Minis Forum motherboard are not less impressive. It supports up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 memory with two SO DIMM slots. For my server build, I've ordered two 32 gigabyte memory modules from Crucial. So I've got 64 gigabytes of memory in total for this secondary Proxmox node, which is enough to run several virtual machines besides the AI workload containers. What's also pretty cool, this motherboard has two M slots for NVMe drives with PCI Express 4.0. Of course, I'm using the first M2 slot for the main operating system and the local LVM storage volume on a one terabyte NVMe drive. But having a secondary M2 slot on this motherboard became particularly interesting for my new Proxmox AI server build because I wanted to have a fast fiber optical connection between this server and my 10 gigabit switch. In the past, I've always used PCI Express cards to add a 10 gigabit network connection. But since I had to put this huge AMD graphics card into the one and only X16 slot on the motherboard, which I'll talk about in a minute here, by the way. So there wasn't any slot left for a 10 gigabit network card. However, I also found an interesting solution here. And this is really super cool. So I've bought this card here. This is an Intel 82599ES SFP plus 10 gigabit network card that I just found on Amazon, it connects with an SFF8087 cable to a small adapter card you can put in the M2 slot on the motherboard. And then you simply transform this M2 slot into another super fast network interface. I know some of you might already know this, but to me, this is a new and exciting way to use the full size PCI Express slot on the motherboard for anything else like putting a graphics card, or you could also think about using it in other build with a large storage controller card. Not having to sacrifice this PCI Express slot for a 10 gigabit network card gives you so much more flexibility to create more exciting home server builds. 
And just to let you know, this network card is detected in Linux without having to install any drivers or without any problems. So it was really straightforward. You just plug it in, connect it, and then it's working. So it was really straightforward. And probably for any future home server builds that I'm doing, I will always use this network card again because then I have more flexibility with the PCI Express slots on the motherboard. By the way, talking about the PCI Express slot, let me also say a few words about the AMD graphics card that I've put into this slot. As I said, I bought the AMD Radeon 7900 XT, so the second largest graphics card made by AMD for consumers, which is also supported by Olama, the AI application that I'm using. At least it was the second largest graphics card when I was building this server, I'm pretty sure. AMD will announce something newer just right after the recording. That seems to always happen when I review hardware Stuff, but yeah, that's the usual deal when doing these videos. In my AI server video, which I'll put you in the description, of course, I briefly explained why I've chosen an AMD graphics card over an NVIDIA. Because one might ask, why didn't I just get one of these amazing RTX 5090 cards or build a massive Mac Studio AI cluster you might have seen in other AI tutorials on YouTube? Well, first and foremost, because it's just super expensive, yeah? Like for an NVIDIA RTX 5090, you have to pay somewhat over 2000 euros. And when you want to buy a cheaper RTX graphics cards like the 5080, which still costs over 1000 euros, you only get 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And guys, this is really just my personal opinion. I have nothing against Nvidia graphics cards, but I think AMD graphics cards, they typically offer a lot more for their money. And so it is the case with this specific graphics card. So the 7900 XT has 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which is really important for running larger LLMs. And it costs about 760 euros which is much cheaper than any NVIDIA RTX 5090 or 5080. Of course, it might be a bit slower than a high-end NVIDIA graphics card, but honestly, I'm not the one who really cares about the most expensive or the most powerful builds for home lab. I always just try to catch a good deal, and that's why I've decided to buy this specific graphics card. So I hope I don't get in a fight with the NVIDIA fanboys here. And ah, by the way, before I forget, I also needed to upgrade my power supply, of course, because this AMD graphics card needed a little more power than my current power supply could provide. In fact, AMD recommends an 850 watts power supply for the 7900 XT, which worried me a bit whether it would drive up the energy consumption too much, but I will talk about this in a minute, so don't worry. As for the power supply, I've ordered an 850 watts power supply from Silverstone, the Gila 850R, a platinum power supply. I think there's nothing else special about this power supply that I could say it's great, it provides enough power, and it's a modular power supply, which makes cable management in the server case easy. And so yeah, these were all of the new components I've used for my Proxmox server build. Honestly, I don't know what else I should tell about building the server. I've built so many computers and servers during all of my home lab projects that it becomes kind of a routine, even though I'm not that experienced hardware YouTuber, to be honest. But this build went pretty well without any unexpected problems, at least for the hardware parts. The AI application deployment and all of that stuff, that was a bit more challenging, but yeah, just watch the other video if you haven't done it already. Again, so the building process itself went pretty well. And this is how my home server or the secondary Proxmox node looks in my home lab server. I, I think this is really nice. But yeah, let's also cover another important topic because you guys always ask me how well the server with the new equipment performs and how much power it consumes. Let's talk about some benchmarks. For the tests, I've used the Geekbench program on Proxmox, mainly to compare the single and multi-core CPU performance. And guys, I was really surprised by the numbers here because when you compare the numbers from my old system to the new system, you can see that it not only improved in performance, but it also didn't consume reasonably more power on idle, which is particularly interesting because I'm using a more power-hungry graphics card. The older build didn't have any graphics card at all. But see for yourself. So these are the numbers with the Intel i7-12700, the older build without any dedicated graphics card. It has a single core score of 2020 and a multi-core score of 13,496. It also has a relatively low power consumption of about 55 watts on idle, which is already great. Of course, when I do a stress test, it goes much higher up to 220, 230 watts. 
But let's now take a look at the Mini's Forum motherboard with the Ryzen HX CPU. So this has a single core score of 2163 and a multi-core score of 20888. And guys, I really don't know what to say. So this CPU seems to be so much faster than the Intel i7 CPU that it's mind-blowing to me. Take in consideration that this is actually a premium laptop onboard CPU. Also for power consumption, this entire build uses 60 to 61 watts on idle, which I know is a bit more than the older i7 server build, but keep in mind that this new build has a super power hungry graphics card and a bigger power supply. And when I did a stress test on the Minis Forum CPU, the power consumption only went up to about 185 watts, which is even lower than the i7. And it proves that the Ryzen HX CPU is not only faster, but it's also much more efficient. What is also interesting when I'm doing some AI workloads on OpenWebUI, it even doesn't go up that high. So it was about 90 watts when I was running the DeepSeek R1 model, for example. Of course, I know these are some really rough estimations and measurements, so I haven't done a full benchmark comparing different types of AI workloads or I didn't do a full 24 hour testing, but I think it should still give you a good estimation on how efficient this new AI server build is. I personally think this is pretty damn good and most of the time I don't really use this AI server build anyway, so only when I'm working, because I usually shut down this entire Proxmox node at night and only turn it on when I really need it. This is by the way one of my best tips to save some power in your home lab and so simple to apply, just turn off the stuff that you don't need. Uh, but yeah, these were all of the hardware upgrades and the benchmarks and power consumption testing I've made to my secondary Proxmox node. I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped you to get some ideas for your next home server build. And if you want to watch more content for home lab enthusiasts and tech guys like us, then please like and subscribe. A big thanks goes out to all of my supporters and channel members. Of course, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.